We are moving through 4.5 cams in motion. We are now down on number seven here. And in this video, we're going to talk about using your data to create a motion graph. And you're going to want to first open up your Excel document that we made in the last video with your completed data filled out. So let's go ahead and insert our scatter plot. So to do that, we're going to select our data. Then we're going to go up to insert. And in the charts area, we're going to drop down the scatter plot options. And we're going to choose this one, which is uh, scatter with smooth lines and markers. Once you do that, you can go ahead and move the graph kind of down below here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and just kind of scoot it over as far to the left as I can, somewhat close to my ch uh, chart above. And we're going to go ahead and make this chart a little bit bigger. I'm going to use the edge of G here as a reference. I don't want to go past that when I go ahead and grab this corner and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go right about, I don't know, right about there. And then let's kind of talk about what we're seeing, and then we're going to edit this um, chart as well. So up top, if you've noticed, I kind of set up these colors ahead of time for you because the colors correspond to the various columns that you see in your chart. So the gray column here is for the top of the follower, which is also indicated down here in the key. The orange is your length of the follower. Now remember, that stayed constant throughout the entire uh, time that we were collecting data, so that's why you see the straight line there. And then the bottom of the follower is in the blue color here, which is also in the blue color here. You're going to notice that both the bottom of the follower and the top of the follower are exactly the same, and they match each other. The only difference is that this gray one is elevated by a distance of 4.6875. So I just wanted you to pay attention to that, recognize that, and notice that within the chart and how it's kind of showing us a graphical representation of the data that we collected up here. It makes it a little bit easier to see, understand, and analyze. So the first thing we're going to do to the chart is change the title. So I'm going to click on that, highlight that, and whatever the name of your cam is, you're going to insert that there. So mine is the pair cam motion graph. So just substitute the name of the cam that you did. Next thing we're going to do is add in some axis labels. We need one on the horizontal and one on the vertical. So again, to do that, you're going to go up to add chart element. Let's click on axis titles. Click on primary or horizontal. Let's repeat that again and do primary vertical. And you'll notice it added in both labels. We just need to fill them in. On the vertical one, we are going to be typing in height, and then in parentheses, we're going to type IN period for inches. So just like that. And I think I spelled height wrong. There we go. E-I-G-H-T. There we go. So I got height, and then my units, and then for my horizontal axis, I am going to put angle of rotation. And then parentheses, I'm going to put degrees for my units. So there is our title and our axis labels. The next thing we need to do is make some adjustments on our x-axis values and our y-axis values. So what am I talking about? These numbers that you see here. So I'm going to click on those, and I'm going to double click. And then this window should pop up for formatting axes. And I'm going to click on this axis option right here. And then I'm going to drop down this menu. So what we need to take a look at is the um, data in your cell, in your uh, stuff up top. And actually, I take that back. I'm getting ahead of myself. What we're f what we're um, setting up is the angle of rotation. Now, this is going to vary for some of you. If you have a hexagon cam, you did increments of 30. So what we're going to do is change this major. So see the units? You're either going to have a 30 or a 45. It depends on what increments you were using for uh, the various cams that you have. So if you have a hexagon, you're typing in 30. For all the other ones, you're typing in 45. And then hit enter on the keyboard. So we got 0, 45, and so on. 
but we have an extra one over here at the end. I'm going to take that off by adjusting this maximum here. So I'm going to change the maximum to 360 and then hit enter. So now we're going 0 to 360 with increments based off of um, the way we changed that data when we were taking our measurements in Inventor. So that is the x-axis. Let's now go to the y-axis or our vertical one. So I'm going to double click on those values and then it will should automatically change over here for you. Now this is where we need to take a look at our data up top. So for the minimum here for our bounds we want to type in whatever the smallest number that we see within the bottom of the follower. So for me the smallest number I see is 0.75. So my minimum is going to be 0.75. You'll need to take a look at your data to figure that out. The maximum, and I'm going to hit enter, sorry. And then the maximum is going to be the largest number that you see in the top of the follower. So for me, that's 5.1825. And I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. And for some reason, I lost. Wait a second. And I lost mine because I accidentally typed in the wrong number. So this should be 5.8125. I accidentally messed that up. There we go. Now we're looking good. So I can close this. And now you can take a look. You got your finished motion graph along with your uh, data. So now you can go ahead and print. So I'm going to press Control P on the keyboard. Um, now if this happens to you, it's because I currently just have my graph selected, so I'm going to hit back here. Right now I'm just selecting the graph, so I need to click off of it. Try this again. Control P on the keyboard. There we go. Make sure my name's all filled out. Everything's there. Everything looks good. So I'm just double checking the preview. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit print. And then it's sending it to the printer. And actually, you know what? Control P. You may have to just double check this scaling. If yours is going off the page and it's not working, you may need to, um, it may be because your graph is a little bit too big, but it should fit. But you may have to just hit fit sheet to one page. Um, so if you're seeing some issues, that might be the solution. And that is it for your motion graph.